This video is going to show uh, how to wire up your own automatic transfer switch um, using a standard um, breaker panel. In this case, this is my fifth wheel breaker panel, um, but you can do this uh, in a house as well. Uh, I'll go over some of the pros and cons here. Um, the reason I did this is because I obviously don't have room for a transfer switch box here and uh, because the wiring is basically pretty simple I wanted to be able to just put in something that I could wire easily and not have a big old box here mounted uh, under the subfloor somewhere or something like that so um, what you see here is my Santrex uh, trace charge controller that just shows output from the solar panels and then here's the the important guy right here this is my Xantrex ProSign 1800 uh, control panel have it wired with a telephone cord uh, up here to right next to my power junction box. Um, that's basically just the switch plate off the front of the sine wave inverter um, with a phone cord coming up here that allows me to turn it off and on. So uh, to wire this up, what I did is I removed the front of my power panel there. I installed a DIN rail. Um, a lot of times uh, DIN rails are used in automation and factory installations. Um, uh, there's quite a few companies selling them, Zorro Tools, Automation.com. Uh, there's lots of factory automation companies that will sell a DIN rail. And then uh, you get uh, these special receptacles that just snap right onto your DIN rail. This one here is made by... Um, is this made by Omron? PTF08A-E, but um, the ones I actually have in there are Magnacraft. Um, they both make the same one, um, and I'm using Magnacraft double throw, double switch, double throw relays. And these are 782XBXM4L and the actual relay or coil is a 120 volt coil and the way I have them wired up is that whenever a breaker that I want to be switched is on it powers the coil and power runs from the utility line whenever I switch the breaker off for that circuit, it turns off the coil and the power then comes from my inverter input into there. So basically I can switch between inverter and utility simply by switching on or off the coil like so. Um, and it all gets uh, neat and tidily, you know, closed up behind my panel there. Um, this does preserve the, the neutral or, or common to ground bond and in an RV this actually happens at the house panel or wherever the shore power that you're plugged into. Um, the current RV box does not bond your common or neutral there to the ground bus. That's done outside in the shore power. Um, Whenever the inverter is on though, it does bond common to ground. So this gets kind of confusing in here. Um, that's why you need a double pull, double throw switch or a double pull, double throw relay because it switches that neutral also. If your inverter didn't bond ground to uh, neutral or common, then you could get by with a single pull, double throw switch. Um, but to conform with electrical codes you pretty much want your inverter to have its own uh, common to ground bond uh, when it's switched on um, because if you're boondocking um, or if you don't have an external ground and neutral bond coming into the panel here um, you're not going to have that bond anywhere so you, you want that safety bond in here if you're in an RV or a boat situation 
Um, if you're constantly connected to shore power, or uh, this is an in-home installation, you could go ahead and uh, disable that bond inside the inverter, and uh, you could actually connect all your, your common and neutral wires at the common neutral bus down here. And uh, that does conform with the National Electrical Code. But if you're RV or boondocking or, or an external power situation, you want the inverter to make that bond. If you've got a modified sine wave inverter, that bond will always exist. Modified sine wave inverters, I believe um, pretty much all of them make that bond as a part of the way they operate. So you're, you're always going to need a double pull, double throw switch there to separate out that, that common wire. Um, but uh, anyway, these MagnaCraft relays are pretty cool. Um, you've got the light that comes on to show uh, when the coil is energized. You do have a little manual override switch there that um, turns it on manually and keeps, the, keeps it in the on position. Um, you can also do it momentarily by pressing the button there. Alright, now for the cons of the system. The, even though these are supposedly rated at 15 amps, um, I'm getting these relays going out all the time. Look at that. Um, they are kind of pricey. You can get them as cheap as 10 bucks, uh, all the way up to like $25 each. Um, shop around. They work great and they do the job great and the, the automatic transfer function is awesome. But the fact that they're burning out on me all the time means that I don't think they're actually capable of holding the 15 amps. Like, uh, especially in the winter time when I was using uh, like a, a plug-in uh, heater, um, a little space heater, or, or whenever I'm running uh, my electric dryer along with something else, um, these get really hot and there's just too many current or too many amps running through them. Um, so even though it might be like a 15 amp circuit, um, I don't think they're actually capable of holding all 15 amps, especially not prolonged over you know a continuous use duty cycle. Um, that being said, if you're in a small installation, you're not going to be uh, pulling a lot of amps with space heaters and, and heavy draw equipment like uh, air conditioners and such. I, I would totally recommend going this way. It's uh, Super easy, very compact, very easy to wire. Um, preserves your your ground bond. You know everything works perfectly. Um, if they sold a 25 amp version of it, I would jump right on board. They do sell an octal base relay, a double throw, double um, double switch, double throw octal base relay. Um, but that you know would take a whole new DIN base and a whole new set of relays and I believe those are only rated at 20 amps um, so that that could be the way to go um, in fact I would go that way if you're pulling any kind of amps at all look for a, something rated at least 20 amps uh, double pull, double throw um, with 120 volt coil and you should be good to go and uh, that's it um, any questions just uh, post your comment.